raven's flock, the flock rundown is the place to be. My man Ryan has been a lifelong Ravens fan since he was born. So I'm telling you now, it's about to go down. The podcast, the flock rundown. Ravens, baby. Nothing gets better than waking up and wondering how high we can fly. Tune in. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim there where the sense can tame the untamed. Appreciate you, Ray. What's up, Ravens fans? My name is Ryan, and welcome back to another episode of The Flock Rundown. Day four of Ravens training camp just wrapped up, and Lamar Jackson is back. He did leave practice about an hour or so in, so he left a little early with a trainer. He's not injured. He just is probably fatigued a little bit, and they don't want to overdo it because he's just coming off being sick. He probably is still kind of sick. It was hot. It was humid out there, so I'm not surprised that he left a little bit early, but it's incredible to see him back. All the kids were screaming when he ran out to the field today, and... uh All of us fans were too, you know, it's definitely exciting to have the two-time MVP back out there for training camp. We hopefully he can stay out there and just get over this sickness and just keep warming back up and uh, get this offense rolling because the defense dominated again. Surprise, surprise. It was an interception frenzy. Marlon Humphrey had two interceptions, one of those being on Lamar Jackson. Marcus Williams had a pick six. Kyle Hamilton had an interception. Trayvon Mullen had two interceptions. Jalen Armour Davis had an interception. Someone that we haven't talked about in that secondary enough is Kyle Hamilton. Now, we all know Kyle's a superstar. He absolutely solidified himself as one of the best safeties in the league, if not the best safety in the league last year in his second season. He was first team all pro, just had an incredible year, and he's just getting warmed up. Let's be real. I mean, this dude, 6'4", can move, can play any position. I think that Kyle Hamilton is arguably the best player on that Ravens defense. And here's a clip of coach Chris Hewitt raving about Kyle Hamilton as well today to the media. Kyle, is a, he's a unicorn. He's a one of one. There's not many guys who come along like that. He's like a generational type player. Um, you know, you don't see many guys who's six foot four uh, who can run and change the direction to the way he does. He still plays with with violence. He's not a uh, he's not a finesse player. Um, He's, he's got it all. He's, he's just a, he's a, he's a different player. He's very unique. Um, there's not many players in the league or coming into the league that I see that look like that. Kyle Hamilton is one of my favorite players to watch in the league, and that is maybe some bias because I obviously am a Ravens fan, but I seriously think I'd be entertained by Kyle Hamilton's game if he was on any team. I mean, it, it's not just because I'm a Ravens fan. This dude is an electric player. The fact that he's so versatile, can play so many different positions on the defense. He can play free safety, strong safety, nickel corner. Like He can play linebacker. He can rush the passer if we need him to. You know, He, was, he had three sacks last year again that Colts game. I mean, Kyle Hamilton's going to be one of the greats in the NFL. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. Injuries would be the only thing that could derail something like that. This dude is special, and I'm so happy and so excited that he's going to be on the Ravens for hopefully his entire career. Dafe Owe dominating again. I feel like I'm saying this like a broken record every episode. Adafe Owe's in the backfield. Adafe Owe's disruptive. I will pause again like I did yesterday. It is only training camp. Definitely have to see this in the regular season. Definitely have to see this with pads on. But I'm not complaining. It's a great, great thing to hear that Adafe Owe looks incredible, looks better than ever, can't be stopped. Here's new defensive coordinator Zach Orr speaking on Adafe Owe today. I think Daf has continued to get better every single, every single year. And when you watch the film, man, it's a lot of people in this league who cannot do what he can do on, on the edge, man. I mean, that guy is so talented, and he made a lot of plays uh, last year. So we expect him to make even more plays this year. And the better Doff is, the better we're going to be as a defender. And, and he knows that, and he's been putting in the work. So um, he's looking better than he did last year so far, and I'm excited to see where he's going to take it. I'm expecting 10 plus sacks from Oway this year. This is a huge year for him. You know, he's got a lot of future money on the line in the next few seasons. 
and he has all the opportunity in the world. He's our leading edge rusher. So I think uh, there's never been a better time or opportunity for Adafe Owe to just ascend into stardom and uh, become an elite pass rusher in this league. He definitely has the ability. He's quick. He's fast. He's strong. He's tall. I mean, there's just, you know, there's not a lot physically that's stopping him. But uh, he's going to have to, you know, develop consistent moves that that work and uh, just make sure he's bringing the quarterback down instead of just getting close. But I'm super high on Adafi Owe this year. Can't wait to see him ball. Another pass rusher that we haven't been talking about enough is Malik Ham. Now, he was an undrafted free agent last season, dominated in the preseason, looked great. We were talking about him a ton in the preseason, but then he got injured and just didn't really play. So now he's back healthy and looks disruptive again. Once again, it's early in camp. There's no pads. But Zach Orr was also raving about Malik Ham to the media as well. Let's run that clip. Malik Ham is one of the hardest workers in the building. Um, and he's came in since day one as a UDFA last year. Obviously, you know, he made the team. It was an unfortunate injury that he had, but he looks just like he uh, picked up where he left off last year. He looks explosive, he looks strong. I'm excited to see him once we get the pads on here uh, next practice and then in the preseason games. But Malik Ham, he's, he's a real dude. Our edge room is not insanely deep. You know, I don't feel like that's one of our strengths of our team. So I feel like Malik Ham has all the opportunity in the world to make the roster and contribute. You know, he's competing with Adafe Owe and uh, David Ajabo, Tavius Robinson, Kyle Van Noy, but Malik Ham has a spot there. I don't really see anyone else jumping him unless there's more injury concerns or maybe when the pads come on and the preseason plays out, Malik Ham's not doing what he did last year, but it sounds like he already is. We saw what he did last year. He was definitely flashing off the screen. If you're watching those preseason games, you knew who Malik Ham was. So excited to see him get more opportunity in the preseason again this year and uh, just see what he can do with it. You know, I really think Malik Ham is going to make this team and definitely can contribute. I think him and Zach Orr probably have a little connection there because they're both undrafted free agents. And uh, so it doesn't hurt that your new defensive coordinator was in the spot that you were, you know, however many years ago. But rooting for Malik Ham, rooting for Adafi Owe, rooting for this team, man. I'm excited to get this thing going. We also got the Nate Wiggins nickname settled. I didn't talk about this much the other day, but I feel like there's more to the story now. So Nate Wiggins spoke to the media, I think, yesterday and said that Marlon Humphrey gave him the nickname Nasty Nate because he plays kind of nasty and uh pause and I definitely didn't think that that nickname was gonna stick I could see on Nate Wiggins face when he was talking about it that he didn't think it was gonna stick I'll just roll a clip of Nate talking about it and you you tell me what you think it's not my nickname he gave it to me he, he called me nasty Nate you know because I guess I play nasty defense I guess so <laughs> that's his nickname for me he wanted me to tell y'all that that's my nickname but it, I, I ain't it's not official for me yet, so I don't know. It, it might get official, but we don't know yet. So he didn't seem too confident about it. But today, Chris Hewitt addressed the nickname and said that he will not be called Nasty Nate and that Nate Wiggins' official nickname is Deuce. His name is Deuce. He's number two. He's Deuce. He's not, we're not calling him Nasty Nate. <laughs> so Deuce makes a lot of sense, and uh, you don't have to worry about pausing yourself or saying something suspect. So uh, we'll go with Deuce, you know what I mean? Nate Wiggins is going to get called Deuce this year. It's settled. I'm good with that. I'm sure we're all good with that. He seems good with that. That's what it is. So moving forward with camp, they're about to get the pads on soon. So that's super exciting. That always ramps up the interior competition competition overall but especially that offensive line defensive line the pass rush versus the tackles and I think we'll see this offensive line competition play out a little bit faster and then excited for the preseason to get started in a few weeks I think that's when we'll get the best look at who's going to be at right guard you know they had Falele at right guard yesterday so I don't know how this offensive line is going to play out but I'm kind of cool with them just experimenting and seeing what works best I think that they have a lot of talented guys there a lot of young guys too so you you know there's a lot of unknowns you need to plug and play at different spots and just see who's shining and who's excelling at what and then uh make a decision in the in the in the coming weeks so that's what I'm really looking at. I keep saying that every day, but I think that the most unknown roster battle on this entire team 
is that offensive line. So I'm pretty glued into what's going on there. And then just excited to see this offense start to get going. You know, I think when the pads get on, we're going to start to see that run game flourish a little bit more too. You know, we do have Derrick Henry. And uh, as Lamar gets over this illness, he'll be out there practicing in full day after day and really developing chemistry with all the receivers, especially Rashad Bateman, who's already been balling. You know what I mean? Rashad Bateman's probably been the most talked about wide receiver in this training camp thus far. And you obviously already know what Zay Flowers brings, what Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely bring. I think this offense will really start picking up. It's not a huge surprise that defense is dominating early in camp. It usually seems to go that way. And they haven't really had Lamar. And when he was there today, he definitely isn't 100%. But that defense is loaded, man. Like Everyone's out there. The secondary is stacked. This is one of the best secondaries we've ever had, and uh, it's not a big surprise that it's just an interception frenzy day after day, but I think that'll change. This offense is going to to start improving and, and, and get better. I, I, I'm not sleeping on either side of the ball. I think our defense is going to be great this year, and I think our offense is going to be great this year, so... The road to the Lombardi is underway, and I appreciate you guys for tuning in to another episode of the Flock Rundown. As always, have a beautiful rest of your day, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Motionless brainwaves attempt to swim, they where the sense can tame the untamed.